Are you not getting those victory royales? Not even making it to end game? Maybe you've watched thousands of streams, but you're still not getting the results you want. But what if you had access to tailor-made, top-secret strategies that only the best of the best knew? Coaching has been a controversial topic. There are many coaches out there that do not have one clue about how to coach. These individuals who call themselves coaches are consistently doing far more damage to people than they are doing any good. Today, we're going to be looking at the difference between a bad coach and a good one. And if you're not sure of a coach's credentials, you can always check out our InstaPro coaching system. Choose a highly skilled and trusted Fortnite coach to play some games with and get some valuable insight, tips, strategies, and advice so you'll be ready for the next big Fortnite tournament. All right, let's get into it. My name is Keith Allen Henson, and today we're going to be discussing the key difference between a bad coach and the one that will have you dominating in arena. As of 2018, almost every single professional League of Legends team has at least one coach, and there's a reason for that. A coach is somebody who's there to help you improve yourself, both mentally and physically. Have you ever been in a situation that just seems so miserable and wondered to yourself, I wish I had somebody to show me the right way? Well, you're in luck. Since 2017, esports coaches have become quite in demand, and that's because they're not only for pro players. Anyone can benefit from a good coach. As the esports industry continues to grow, more and more aspiring competitors of all levels have started seeking coaches out. One article read, although gamers themselves need to put the time and effort into improving their skills, a coach is needed to point them in the right direction. Coaching physical sports isn't too much different than coaching virtual ones. So he does land pretty well. He like knows how to like parachute from a pretty good distance. He's hitting a bunch of the one-hit materials. So initially, when you do pick up shields or minis or anything like that, I would highly suggest taking it, unless you do have a big pot and you're trying to hold it to do the obvious like the mini and the big pot combo where it heals you for 200 shield. He's leading up really well, except he's not farming, so he should definitely be working on farming a bit more. He does have materials here and he's not building, he's just running in there, rocket launch screen, and then he gets shot at by the two people he was trying to pinch, so that was basically unfortunate. He committed too far into the situation without building, and because of doing that, it got him killed. But then we hit a roadblock. Why do I even need a coach? Can I just learn all this stuff online? An article posted by Gamer Sensei addressed that topic. They stated very brilliantly, it's important to have someone pointing out issues or a player could be wasting a lot of time grinding games out with the same mindset. When this happens, players become hard stuck at a certain rank area. That's precisely why just watching your favorite player's VODs isn't enough. Although you can learn a good amount from videos, the information you're getting isn't always optimal in helping build a player's potential. Just because a player is top ranked doesn't mean his techniques will fit into your own playstyle. This is where coaches come in. They can give you precise, specific information that suits your individual needs. Things that you probably don't even know that are holding you back. All right. So I want you to just let me see what you got to work with. Give me a double 90 real quick. Dude, I don't even, I'm not even sure what a 90 is. This is a 90, you ready? So a double 90 would be this. Ooh, we almost did it. That was good. A study by Harvard Business Review listed the top three reasons coaches are actually required to improve. The first was to develop high potentials or facilitate transitions, helping build a player and help him reach his or her potential. Number two, act as a sounding board. A sounding board is a good listener and either confirms what they hear or offers an opinion when the sound they hear is off key. And the third was address derailing behavior. Sometimes you have to come in and let somebody know that they aren't behaving properly. But not every coach is made equal. And you might be wondering, what happens if I don't have a good coach? While a good coach inspires and excites their players and students, a bad coach will make the game unenjoyable for you. A chore. You may even experience self-doubt from bad coaching and wonder if you should even be playing the game as they keep pointing out your flaws and errors. A good coach will instead encourage you to work harder, push through the fatigue, and bounce back from past failures. They'll show you how to improve for next time. Basically, they'll unlock your true potential. Even if a coach has all the knowledge in the world, if they don't connect with you and motivate you, you're probably dealing with a bad coach, or at least a bad fit. Kelly Riggs, author, speaker, and member at Forbes Coach Council, stated in his article, Great coaches understand fundamental human needs. They help employees improve their skills while providing a sense of value for their individual contributions to the team. 
Great coaches create a culture that fosters trust because trust is the foundation of any relationship. And it is that relationship that allows the good coach to point out improvements that can be made while avoiding the trap that constant criticism creates. It appears that often the relationship between the student and coach is far more important than the coach being super skilled at the game. Although, that helps. A good coach should not only teach you to progress at your game, good coaches teach their players how to attain better quality skills such as perseverance, confidence, and reach their goals. They use these methods as stepping stones to a greater good. They strive to build a healthy relationship with the student to the point where the student wants to come back and learn more. Flexibility is something that also coaches possess. They approach their teaching by continuously looking for a better way to reach each student. When a player struggles to learn something, the better coaches do not look at this thing as a learning disability and blame the player for their incompetence. Instead, they address it as a teaching opportunity and therefore they change how they're presenting the material to that player. If one approach doesn't work, then try another until they figure out the best way to reach that particular player. A bad coach, on the other hand, uses one effective method to try and reach everybody. He places his ego above all else and forces the student to learn at his pace is usually very disrespectful. He doesn't understand that every human being is different and their needs need to be addressed as such. Let's dive into a couple of examples of a good Fortnite coach versus a bad one. Take editing, for example. You can see many players learn their editing from watching what the pros do on stream. There is a lot more specifics when it comes to editing that the pros won't tell you. A coach will not only go over the many different ways to edit, but he will also show you which edits are necessary for each scenario. The coach is also there to help you track your edit progress and will point out improvements. Many times we see the pros do edits that may seem quite strange and we wonder why they use that particular edit play. I want to remind you that the pros are on top for a reason and believe it or not, some of them have even been coached by other pros. Think of a good coach as somebody who is there to help give you the full story and not part of it. A bad coach, however, would probably give you only the basics and most likely would criticize you more than encouraging you. Instead of pointing out how you could improve your edits, they will most likely grow impatient or critique you often, not giving you the full scope on how to better yourself. If we look at aiming, this aspect seems really simple at first, but it really isn't. Aiming is probably, if not, the most essential part of Fortnite. If you don't hit your spot, then all of your building edits, flashy plays, they all go to waste. A good coach will point out two different aspects of shooting, flicking, and tracking. He will let you know that other than Kovacs, Fortnite has many different maps available to you to help you practice your aim. He'd help you with getting the right sensitivity for you and track your progress diligently. The same holds true for a bad coach, but the exact opposite. A bad coach will tell you your aim is bad, and the only way to improve is to keep playing the game. He most likely won't even mention Kovacs' aim trainer is a thing. Time and time again, we hear that the only way to get better is through practice. Now, what kind of practice is just playing a game with no idea how to get better? Sure, your shot might get slightly better, you're building and editing as well, but you won't reach the top tier. Good coaches are there to help you improve at the highest level possible. Okay, so for all of you who really haven't quite got it yet, we will go through a quick review of what we learned. Coaches are absolutely necessary for all fields of life. They not only provide you with grounds to improve, but they also could be an excellent friend too. Good coaches usually have patience. They are there to evaluate your necessities and address them accordingly. They aren't pushy and they encourage you to improve in a positive light. You will feel relaxed and that you are making progress. Bad coaches, they may make you feel intimidated or even seem like they are expecting you to improve overnight. They don't give you room for improvement and they just make things miserable. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is Keith Allen Henson and stay tuned for more.